All right, in this video, we're going to talk about three things, loops, conditionals, and switches. So we'll start with loops, and loops basically allow you to run a, a block of code and uh, execute tasks as long as a certain condition is true, and it'll repeat that task until the condition is true. All right, so let's do a really simple example, and there's basically two types of loops we'll be going over. It's the for loop and the while loop. So for a for loop, we're going to go ahead and use the for keyword, open up some parentheses, and in here we're going to have three parameters. The first is going to be a declaration of the variable we're going to use within the loop. We're going to call it i, and we want to set it to zero. Okay, we want to separate these parameters with a semicolon. The next is going to be the condition. So let's say as long as i is less than 10, semicolon. And then the last will be just an increment. We want to say i++, plus plus, and that's just going to increment whatever i is by 1. So in here, all we need to do, or all we want to do, is just console log i. Okay, so let's go over it again. We're setting a variable i to 0. We're saying as long as it's less than 10, then we want to run whatever is in here. And we're going to increment it by 1 after every time it runs. All right, so if we save and we go and reload, you'll see that down here, console logs 1 through 9. Okay, the reason it went to 9 is because the condition is if it's less than 10. Once it hits 10, it's no longer less than 10, so it cuts off. It's not going to keep going. All right, if we were to change the condition to less than or equal to 10 and reload, you can see now 10 is included because that's part of the condition. Now, we're going to work more on for loops, but before that, I just want to show you the while loop, which is very similar. Okay, so I'll show you how to do the same exact thing. So we're going to say while, and then all we want to put in here is the condition. So we'll say while i is less than 10. And then in here, we want to console.log i. And then we do the increment in here as well, so we'll say i++. plus plus. All right, and then what I'm going to do, whoop, what I'm going to do is comment this out. Okay, we'll run that, and let's see, i is not defined. Okay, so i actually has to be defined outside of it. So we'll say var i equals zero. Okay, so the, the main difference is you're, when you declare the variable, you're doing it outside of the while loop. Uh, and then you're incrementing it from within here, not within the parameters. All right, so let's go ahead and comment that out too. And next I want to uh, do another for loop, but I want to use a for loop to uh, loop through an array. All right, so let's say var people. Okay, we'll create an array of people's names. Say Bob. Frank, Sally, and Mike. Okay, so we have this array of people's name. And all we want to do is print these out. Okay, just like we do with the numbers, we want to print out these names. So we'll say four. Same thing, we're going to say i equals, actually, we should be doing var i equals zero. And then we'll say as long as i is less than people dot length. Okay, remember, an array is an object, and an, and an object has a length property. Okay, in this case would be four. So we're basically saying as long as i is less than four, and then we'll increment. And then down here, what we want to do is just console dot log people and then i. So now if we go and we run that, you can see that the names are now being printed out down here. Now we can also do this with objects or an array of objects. So I'm going to bring my comment down. And then we'll create a variable called people again. Except this time it'll be objects. So we'll just do name. Bob and let's also give him an age. So age 40. OK, 
Okay, and then we'll say Frank 30. Sally will say 25. And then Mike will say 34. All right, so we have this array of objects. And then what we want to do is the same thing we did up here. I'm just going to grab this for loop. Okay, except we want to get the name property. So right here, we're just going to do dot name, reload, and you can see we get the names. If we want to get the age, we can do that as well. And you can see we get a list of all the ages. Now, you most likely won't want to just console log this stuff. You'll want to output it into the browser. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing we're going to do is create a variable called output and I'm just going to set it to uh, just to an empty string right now. All right, and then in our for loop, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, in our for loop, we're going to say document dot get element by ID. Okay, and we need to create an element to insert it in. So up here, let's create a div. Actually, let's make it a UL and we'll give it an ID of people. Okay, so now down here, we want to get the element with the ID of people. And then we're going to say dot inner HTML. And we want to append to this. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to just set equals because that'll replace it. We want to append so we can do that with plus equals. All right, so we're going to say plus equals, and let's make it an li. And then inside the li, I want the name and the age. So let's go ahead and concatenate here people i dot name concatenate. And let's see, we'll put a dash. And then we need to concatenate again the age. And that should do it. So let's save it, reload. And now you can see we have an unordered list here with the name and the age of each person in that array. All right, so that is the for and while loop. Now we're going to take a look at if statements. And if you've worked with other programming languages, you probably already know some of this stuff. I'm just going to comment this out. All right, so what we'll do here is let's create a variable called x and we'll set it to 25. Actually, let's set it to something lower, let's say 10. And then we'll create another variable called y and we'll set it to 15. And then we're going to do a simple if statement. We're going to say if x is less then y. Okay, so if x is less than y, then we want to do something. What we want to do for now is just console log, and we'll just put in uh, x, and let's concatenate here. Say x is less than, and then we can concatenate y. Like that. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. And down here, 10 is less than 15. All right, so let's do an else. Then we'll call it, I'll just copy this. So we know if it's else, then uh, x is going to be more than y, right? So even if I reload, it's going to stay the same. But if I go and I change 10 to 20 and then reload, now it says 20 is more than 15, so it's now running this. Now there's one other uh, outcome that we can have, and that's equal to. So if we set these both to 20, reload, we get 20 is more than 20, which doesn't really make sense. All right, so what we want to do is add an else if in this situation. So right here, let's say else if. And then in here we'll say x is equal to y. All 
right, and then we'll console log, and we'll just say x is equal to y. So now if we reload, we get 20 is equal to 20. Okay, if we were to change that, we get 25 is more than 20. If we were to change this to something higher, we get 25 is less than 30. So every situation is now covered with this if else statement. Now you can also use um, other operators in here, and you can do more than one thing too. So let's say we want, let's say we have another variable called z, and we'll set that to 10. Okay, so in here we want to say if x is less than y and z is equal to 10. Okay, so both of these have to be true in order for this to run. Okay, and if we reload, let's actually change this a little. We'll say and z is 10. Okay, and you can see we're getting that because x is greater than y, I mean, I'm sorry, x is less than y, and z is equal to 10. If I change this to, uh, let's change that to 14, it's not going to work, okay? So you can also do or, and or would be two pipe characters like that. So in this case, it would this would only be true if x was uh, less than y, or if z is equal to 10. Okay, so it doesn't have to be both, it can just be one. All right, so next thing I want to look at is a switch, a switch statement. So let's comment this out. And what we'll do is we'll create a name and we're gonna set it to the string Joe. Okay, and then what we'll do is have a switch and that switch is gonna take in that name. Okay, it's gonna check on that name and then we're going to create a couple cases for it. So let's say case Joe. I'm going to put a colon there. And then what we want to happen. So we'll just do console log. We'll say my name is Joe. And then we need to break. Okay. Whenever we finish with a case, we want to break. Let's say Jeff. Okay, break, and we'll do one more name. Let's say Jack. All right, so if we go and we run this, you can see we get my name is Joe. If we were to change name to Jeff, reload, we get my name is Jeff. If we were to change it to, let's say, Adam, and reload nothing happens okay so in this case what we want to do is set a default so we'll say default and let's do console.log and we'll say my name is and then we'll just concatenate on the name variable up at the top and then break so now if we reload we're still we're gonna get my name is Adam okay because that's in the default all right, so we're going to stop here. That is loops, uh, loops, conditionals, and switches.